All right, folks, here we are at the Schomburg Fishing Expo again. I don't know, the expo has a name, but I never remember the name. I'm going to start uh, with the Daiwa boot this time, then Shimano, and see how far I get. It is Friday now. If I can't go to the whole show uh, today, I'll come again tomorrow. But let's start with the Daiwa boot. Daiwa released two new low-end reels last year. The first one that you see right here is the QG750. It has 4 plus 1 bearings, MSRP of $39.99, folding handle, pretty light. It actually has a very nice paint job and it's overall a nice little reel. The second one is the QZ750, which is the same reel but you get two more bearings and a cork handle for extra $10. I'm sure many shoppers in this price range will appreciate the folding handle. Of course, like all 750 size reels, they come with a typical tiny spool that makes monofilament line insanely curly and impossible to cast. The best feature on these reels is definitely the sound of the drag. It sounds vibrant and metallic and is without a doubt the best sounding drag of all Daiwa reels in the booth, bar none. That's right, I don't care who you are and where you come from, the drag sound on this cheap plastic QZ750 is more enjoyable to listen than the drag sound on the $800 Daiwa Exist LT. Unfortunately, the QG and the QZ750 do not feel like a Daiwa in the hand. They're not as smooth and they have a little bit more resistance and they feel more like a Fluger or Okuma in the hand. They're still smooth, they're alright, but they just don't have this magic feeling that uh, even the low-end uh, Daiwa LT reels have. The Legalis LT costs only $10 more, but it looks better, the knob is thinner and more comfortable, the gears are smoother, the gears are bigger and stronger, uh, the reel has less resistance, and despite being bigger, uh, which the 1000 size Legalis is bigger than the 750QZ, both reels actually weigh the same. But if you absolutely refuse to spend the extra $10, then just buy the Revrus LT. The Revrus and Legalis are one and the same reel, but in the Revrus, one of the bearings on the pinion gear is removed. Now that particular bearing is important for me, which is why I have never recommended the Revrus LT to anyone. But if you have to choose between the Revrus LT and the QZ for $50, there is no doubt that the Revrus LT is a hundred times better. It is a thousand times better. The Exceller is a Legalis with a screwing handle and the Fuego is Exceller with mag sealed main shaft. Neither of them are worth the extra money over the Legalis LT in my opinion, but if you do buy one of them over the Legalis, it's not that bad of a deal. The Procyon LT is however very different from uh, all the other LT reels that I mentioned so far. All LT reels cheaper than the Procyon have the cast zinc alloy gears. In the Procyon you will find the higher end machine cut aluminum gears. Also and just as important, while all the cheaper reels have plastic frame, the Procyon has carbon frame, which is not only lighter but actually much more rigid. The Procyon, the Tatula and the Ballistic are actually one and the same reel. The Tatula adds improved spool support on the bottom and the Ballistic adds seals. If you're interested in these three reels, I'm going to put a link to my video where I compare them and show all the differences between them. Okay, here is the new Daiwa Kage LT. I thought it was Cage, but they told me it was Kage. I guess Cage would be spelled with C. It's not really new, they released it early in 2019, but because they don't sell it in Bass Pro or Cabela's, this is actually the first time I saw it in person. 
It's a designated ultralight reel sold only in small sizes from 1000 to 2500 and that's why when I found out about it I was really excited and I just was looking for where can I buy it. And by the time I find out where to buy it I realized that this is not really a new reel. And not only that but I already own this reel. And that's because the Kage is nothing but a tattooer with two small differences and I already have the tattooer. The first difference is that you get this cork knob here and two extra bearings to support it. However, this cork knob is kind of thick and I really resent thick knobs on ultralight reels. Actually, I resent thick knobs on all reels. But for me personally, this cork knob is not an upgrade. And I never cared for bearings in the handle knobs to begin with. I think the knob on my tattoo is just perfectly smooth already. The other difference with the tattoo is the spool support bearing that you see right here. Here is an interesting and somewhat impressive fact for this bearing. The only other LT reel that has that bearing is the $800 Exist LT. The tattoo and the Ballistic don't have it, the Caldia LT doesn't have it, the $400 Certate LT doesn't have it, the brand new $370 Daiwa Luvius doesn't have it. Uh, the Exist LT is the only reel that has a bearing there. This bearing might be the only justification for paying the extra money to get the Kage over the tattoo. I haven't fished this reel and I can't tell you if the bearing makes enough of a difference. And I'm not gonna buy it just because of this one bearing because I already have the tattoo and I bought my tattoo from Japan to get the low gear ratio. This reel doesn't come in a low gear ratio and I don't like the thick knob as I mentioned. But if you don't have the tattoo and you're you know thinking between this reel and the tattoo and you wanna jump for this one instead of the tattoo. You know what, there are worse decisions that you can make, so you know, just go get it and enjoy it. Both this reel and the Tattooer are amazing little ultralight reels. And finally, here is the reel for which I came to this show. The brand new 2020 Daiwa Luvius LT. The reel is not even for sale yet, but I do have it pre-ordered and if you want to see a detailed review on the reel as soon as it comes out, uh, make sure you follow my channel. But for right now I will give you my initial impressions. And because we were just talking about the spool support bearing in the car game, here is how it looks in the brand new Luvius. Yes, the Daiwa Luvius cost almost twice as much as the Kage and yet we have a plastic bushing here. I hope this was a weight savings measure and not a cost cutting measure because that would be just disappointing. But I'm willing to give Daiwa the benefit of the doubt here because replacing this plastic bushing with a metal bearing would probably add, I don't know, 3 grams to the weight of the reel. And this might seem insignificant to you but the lightest model of the Luvius weighs 150 grams and the Shimano Vanquish weighs 145 grams and I believe Daiwa is trying to position the Luvius close to the Vanquish. So as you can see every gram counts there. So I'm not that upset about this polyurethane bushing because Shimano put the same bushing on the same place in their Vanquish. Something that I'm really upset about though and something that I cannot forgive Daiwa is putting the same horrible, terrible drag clicker uh, that you find in all of the LT reels in the brand new Luvius. I said this earlier and I'm gonna say it again and I don't think it's a matter of opinion. The drag clicker on the cheap QZ750 is better and more enjoyable than the drag clicker on any Daiwa LT reel, including the $800 Exist LT and including the brand new Luvius LT. Now some of you that are new to my channel are probably thinking he's just a Daiwa hater or Shimano fanboy or something. But let me tell you, I have, and you can confirm this with my videos, I have 45 Daiwa reels. All of my non-Daiwa reels are only 25. 
And this is the right way to measure someone's opinion, how they spend their money. Because words are free, everybody can say whatever they want. It's just that I really hate this clicker and I wish that Daiwa would drop that nasty thing at least from the high-end reels. The $25 Quantum Optics has an amazing clicker. The $45 Okuma Epixor XT has an amazing clicker. This $370 Daiwa should have a decent clicker. By the way, notice that I'm talking about the clicker and not the drag. All Daiwa LT reels, even down to the cheapest Revros LT, have just butter smooth drag and I have absolutely no complaints in that department. And now that I'm done with the stupid clicker, I'm ready to tell you that the reel looks absolutely gorgeous in person and feels different than anything I have ever tried. I don't know if it's, you know, the new bigger size gears, but the reel just feels different. I don't want to say better than the Shimano Vanquish. I don't know which of them has less resistance. I really have to play with both of them, you know, side by side to, to determine that. But the reel definitely has a unique feeling. I think the new gears change the distribution of weight. Just the, the moment you, you hold the reel, you, you feel something different. I don't know what else to tell you right now. The reel looks and feels just great and I really can't wait to get my own in the mail. And here is the Certate LT. The Certate LT is not a new reel but this is the first time I got the opportunity to try it. And let me tell you, the reel looks huge before you pick it up. But once you pick it up in your hand, like, I know these reels are fancy and I know this reel weighs like 210 grams. And still the moment you pick it up, you cannot believe how light this thing is. You know, it's cold because it's made of aluminum, it's cold to the touch, it just feels metal and yet it is so damn light. It is just unbelievable. Also, even though this is a bigger and heavier reel than the Luvius, it still has almost zero resistance when you turn it. I don't know how that's possible. This is this is aluminum reel. I mean, it, it has a lot bigger rotor and a lot bigger gears. There must be more resistance, but you know, it's, it's hard to tell the difference. It's just incredible. It still has the plastic spool support bushing and the nasty clicker, but I think nobody wants me to go back there again. And this is the Exist LT that was released in 2018, so it's it's not new, but you know, every time I touch this reel, I'm thinking this is more of a piece of art than it is a fishing tool. And I don't think these are just words, because I don't think Daiwa makes these reels to make money. I think uh, they know pretty well that they're not gonna sell very many, you know, Exist LT reels. I think they just make these to, to show everyone what they can do. Because you know, the, the Chinese and the Koreans, they can copy the QG and the QZ, but nobody will even try to copy the, um, you know, Exist LT. So I think this is just a showcase reel. It doesn't feel any smoother than the Certate LT or the Exist LT, and yet it feels better. and. I just really hope one day I find one of these on clearance somewhere and uh, manage to buy one of these uh, for myself. It does have the horrible clicker though, as I mentioned repeatedly. However, unlike the Certate LT and the Luvius LT, it does have a metal bearing for a spool support. The last reel that I'm going to show you today is the relatively new MCAST LT Bait Runner. It's a beautiful all black carp reel that I've been looking at for a long time. And the only reason I never bought it is that it has only three bearings. That means that even the gears are not fully supported by bearings and that's a big turn off for me. In my fishing bible one of my first commandments says Thou shalt not remove any bearings from the pinion or the main gear. 
Of course with three bearings you're not gonna have a line roller bearing either which is kind of important for me too, especially for carp fishing. However, I'm here to tell you that this is one butter smooth reel. Yes, I haven't fished the reel and I haven't tried it under load so you should take this with a grain of salt but again I'm telling you out of the box this reel is just as smooth as those two and three hundred dollar reels that I just tried earlier. The only thing that still holds me back on this reel is the weight. This is an LT model that only comes in small sizes and it has a graphite body and air rotor and it's supposed to be pretty light and yet this is one heavy son of a gun. Ten and a half ounces for the 2500 size. I have so many 4000 size diver reels that I use for carp fishing and those have aluminum body and much bigger spool and those weigh only 10 ounces. Where is all this weight coming from? Yeah, I know it has the extra clutch, but I'm just warning you, this is not a light reel. However, uh, if weight is not a concern for you, and most carp anglers don't really care about weight because traditional carp rods are pretty heavy to begin with, and you always cast heavy stuff, and you haul back pretty heavy fish, so they're not gonna feel an extra ounce or two. Uh, in that case, uh, like I said, it is a really smooth reel, really smooth clutch, excellent price, um, you might as well go for it. And that's all I have for this video guys. If you have any questions about any of these reels, drop me a comment and I will get back to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.